Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Zebu Nation. We're back with FC Cincinnati, and the 2020 MLS season is finally starting to roll, finally starting to gain some momentum. So let's take a look at the competition, see where we're at. Managed to hold on to a fourth place in the Eastern Conference after 13 games. We got seven wins, two draws, four losses, total of 23 points, and a plus five goal differential, which is actually pretty amazing when you consider where we come from this year and last year to have a positive goal differential. And in fact, strangely, it's the best goal differential in the Eastern Conference. I definitely did not expect that. Now, when we look over to the Supporters Shield, we definitely have some teams that are much better than us, but we'll take a look at them in order here. So, we have also managed to hold on to our position in the Supporters Shield, ninth place overall, but we are a far cry from LA and San Jose out there in the Western Conference, both sitting at 34 points, plus 15 and plus 16 goal differential. So, those two teams are really out there killing it compared to the rest of the league they've really separated themselves quite a bit you know it's uh, six points to the closest team and that's philadelphia so we got a lot of work to do to catch up to those kind of teams or they've got a lot of work to do to fall back to the rest of the league we'll see what happens you know both of those things tend to happen quite often in mls so we'll see uh we'll see what happens but um i guess that's about it that i want to look at of course Champions League, we ended basically one goal short of a Champions League uh, victory. And now we got to look on to the U.S. Cup. That's going to be coming up next. Not this video, but next video. Going up against North Carolina, which is a little bit of a difficult draw. Except when you look at the rest of the uh, the fourth round, when you see... It's mostly MLS teams in here. So we didn't draw an MLS team, so I guess uh, that's the bright side. The bad side is that North Carolina is one of the better uh, lower division teams. So we'll see how that plays out. Last year, we started in the second round, and we got knocked out in the second round because I didn't take it seriously. This year, I guess we'll have to take it a little bit more seriously because North Carolina is a, a team that I respect anyway. Uh, let's see. Schedule-wise, you, of course, saw the Champions League 1-0 loss. Terribly unfortunate there. But since then, managed to pull the team together and go on a little bit of a decent streak here. Two wins and a loss in our last three. Sort of the most exciting game was here against Orlando City, where we got another late winner. Take a look at these goals. Seems to be something we're doing quite often this season is getting some late winning or tying goals. So I'm very happy about that on one hand. On the other hand, it'd be nice if we didn't have to do that. So we had a bit of a rotated lineup in there. There's Wadey. It falls to Alashe, who just sort of knocks it in because he had nothing better to do, I suppose. And then here is Orlando messing around with it on their side. Putting pressure on him. Fernando Adi. He just steals it from the keeper, and we're up 2-0 right before half. So I, I think we're cruising, and I'm thinking, like, okay, we got this game in hand, but there's Sané, or Sané. He manages to get one pass, and then here comes Orlando storming back. 82nd minute, De Silva sends one in. Philippe heads it out straight back to De Silva, and he just decides to do it himself. Left footer. But then here we go. We get a controversial call. DeVries sends one in. Kiri Shelton in the 94 and 33 second minute. We get the winner. So, dramatic fashion there. We start out our little winning streak. Then we go 2 2 versus New England. We had to scrape and claw in this one. This was a, this was a tough battle. We were down 2 1 for most of the second half until Justin Glad knocked one in in the 64th minute. So New England, you know, I predicted at the beginning of the season they would be tough, and they are tough, but we did manage to scrape a draw against them, so I was actually kind of happy with that. And then 1-0 versus New York Red Bull, which was a bit of a shocker, because we were supposed to play New York City first and New York Red Bull second, 
But New York City, they got their uh, game rescheduled because of the U.S. Cup, I guess, or something they were doing. I think it, I think it said U.S. Cup. But anyway, they rescheduled their game. Justin Glad got the player of the match with one key chance and one goal, or one assist, I mean. And Acosta got the goal. I mean, I guess we could look at that. I don't even remember the goal, so I guess we should look at it. But yeah, so we were supposed to play NYC FC. Instead, we played the Red Bull. Got sort of a dull 1-0 affair. Here's just before half. Oh, yeah, glad. This was a weird goal, but Acosta pounced on it. The goalkeeper made a dive for it, but came up just short. And, uh, yeah, so we, we are starting to see some funky goaltending. It's not obviously as bad as FM18, but, you know, there's still some funky goalkeeping going on, especially with dives and jumps. I've noticed that specifically are a little weird. But anyway, today's matchup is versus NYCFC. Uh, they've cleared out their roster from a lot of the old players that you recognize, but they still have some of the similar registration problems. They do have 20 players on the roster now. They've got, uh, you know, a little over 100000 left on the salary cap, so they could possibly bring in a player or two. Uh, they could bring in two off-budget players if they felt like it. They've got their maximum number of reserve players. Um, four non-reserve off-budget. So basically, they could bring in two senior minimum salary guys and have them contribute if they wanted to, but they don't apparently want to. Uh, take a look at their lineup. A uh, little bit questionable in goal with Alex Can, a two-star player. 29-year-old American, no caps. I mean, he looks uh, he looks halfway decent. He's not terrible, but two stars isn't really going to get it done in MLS. They do have Vieto, uh, their designated player who's playing very well. Four-and-a-half star player. He's very talented. And then they still have Medina up top as well, out on the left-hand wing. Henrique, striker. So they still have some talent. Got a lot of injured guys, guys on the disabled list and stuff like that. So as ever, New York has roster issues, but we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on today's game. We are the favorite, 6-4 to favorites. Um, last, we've only played them twice, one win and one draw. Since we started playing, we are playing at Yankee Stadium. Only 14,000 there out of a 54,000 seat capacity stadium. So that is not going to be a very lively crowd. Uh, Kevin Stott is the referee. Average of 2.6 cards per match. So we can expect that. Let's get to the team selection. 73 and breezy. So it's a nice day in New York. We're going. We're sticking with our reverse Z formation. That's going to be kind of the theme for this year. See how it works out. So far, I like it. So far, it makes the team feel a little more stable. Okay, so here we go. They do have Can and Goal, Villafania at fullback, Tinerom. So they still have a decent uh, defense. Pertuz and Sands, Ring and Iguita in the midfield. Medina, Kamara. Ooh. Ola Kamara. They got him playing. Huh. Advanced playmaker. That's not really his forte. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Vieto on the right. Henrique up top. Yeah, he's pretty much a striker. So, that's what they're going to have to deal with. Anyway, we've got Stefan in goal. Nuhu, Aguirre, Tilt, and Glad in central defense. We've had a lot of players who want more playing time. Tilt is one of them. And uh, so we're getting him in there. Another guy who wants more playing time is Akugo. So we brought in the team captain to play defensive midfielder. He's actually the most natural Segundo Volante, Segundo Volante we have on the team. So I guess it's not that bad that we're bringing him in. Akechi in the midfield is our highest rated player. DeVries, Acosta, Sonora, and Adi. So pretty much at full strength up top Sonora still needs to build some match fitness because of that injury that he's been out all year this is like his second or third game back so he's still got some issues happening uh it's all up to you have a good one whatever let's go tunnel talk you come into this one in good form send the assistant all right so here we go half empty brooklyn stadium 
Not to so good, not so good. Maybe it's good for us because there won't be a great atmosphere to get uh, New York hyped, but it also might lull us to sleep. I don't know. Tilt just bombs one forward. And, yeah, we're going to see if we can get some real highlights. What are we on? Speaking of highlights, we're on Extendo Highlights. Let's drop it down to key so that we can get two games in uh, this episode. That would be lovely. Biguita still has a little bit of animosity in his heart, I think, for us trading him. Got a yellow card there. Here's a catchy now. Sends one in. It's headed out. There's Iguita. He's playing hard. He's going to try to get his revenge. Lots of space. Just storming downfield all by himself. Gets it out wide to Vieto. Centers. Oh, Justin Glad. Good header. Good defense there. And now we can start the counterattack with Acosta. Obviously not. Not a great pass. My man. Not so good. He's, he's looking for revenge. He's pressuring Sands. Look at how, look at the discrepancy between those two guys. Uh, it's Adi and Acosta. Shows you the size difference for sure. Missed header at midfield. Enrique looking, looking. Gets it forward. Vieto crosses it. Easy goal for Ring. Not happy about that. I mean, I understand Vieto's a great player, but it looked like we had the angle. Right here on this pass. It looked like we had the angle to go get it, but Vieto just beat our player. It looked like um, Nuhu that he beat to the ball. Even though Nuhu's very fast. He just used his other powers to get there. Let's take a look at this Vieto character. Dribbling, first touch, technique, Oof, off the ball, flair, determination, all these 15s all over the place. Physically, he's also pretty decent. 14 pace, 15 acceleration. Not like a big strong guy, but he's got speed and quickness, so that's pretty much what he used. Here's a catch. He sends one in, a, going for Acosta. He couldn't quite get there because he's 5'3". Here's Sonora with the shot. Look at that. He curved that one in. And again, the goalkeeper has some problems uh, diving for the ball. But we need to put more shots on this guy. He's a two-star player, as we looked at. So we need more shots on goal. We shouldn't have Acosta charging towards the front of the net. Should probably change that around. Then he just sort of bends it in there. Goalkeeper. Looked like he was in position. Just mistimed his dive, I guess. Maybe he... he you know, the ball came out of the traffic and he couldn't see it through the traffic or something. I don't know. Work with me here. I'm trying to, like, not break the immersion as often as I always do. So, four shots, three on target, and a goal. We evened it up. That's good. Here we go. Free kick, catch. He sends one in. Adi looked completely offside, but here's DeVries. Can't score, and he does, again, not offside still. There we go. Look at all the Cincinnati fans who made the trip to New York. There we go. Way to go, boys. I, did, I thought everybody was offside. Adi looked offside. And then DeVries looked offside right here. But I guess that doesn't count. I'm always a little confused when it comes down to that goalkeeper. Does the box like nullify all offsides? I don't think it does. So I'm, I'm still confused at that situation. Anyway. Maybe it's FM problem. I don't know. Here's DeVries again. Moving forward. Takes the shot. DeVries hasn't had a great season like he had last year. He's just sort of a, been a dude out there on the wing. Just a guy. Just a fella. But. You know, he's valued at 1.1 million. He is still a pretty decent player. And. He's got a goal today, so he's, he's starting to turn things around. I'd like to see him, uh, you know, start getting more games like this. 7.8 with a goal and an assist. That's the sort of potential we saw in him, in him last season before that uh, horrific injury that he had. Here he goes again to Vries. Starting the attack. Sends one in. There's Acosta wide open. Good stop by Can. Costa getting in on the attack. He is set as an attacking midfielder. So here's a catchy. 
Sends one in. Can't get it to Acosta again. Tavriz fights for it and wins it. That's that scrappiness again that we saw last season. He is on the wrong side of the field, though. So that's not great. He's getting pressured and going slowly in the wrong direction. And there ends the highlight. Okay, that's good. I didn't really want to see any more of that. Whatever that was, I didn't. I wanted to see less of that. So here we go. Halftime. Two to one. That's pretty good. We'll take that going into next half. I don't really think there's any adjustments I want to make per se. I mean, we can look at the tactics real quick, just for your own uh, sort of edification here. Same as we've been playing tighter marking, prevent goalkeeper distribution. Sort of a, you know, middle-of-the-road pressing formation here. In transition, we're counter-attacking and counter-pressing, distributing quickly. In possession, we're just sort of generically slightly shorter passing and being more disciplined. That's the only two things we got going on here. Other than that, not a lot happening. Pep talk. All right. Um, don't get complacent. All right. Who didn't like that? Sonora didn't like that. Seemed to lose confidence. We'll be calm. Um, you weren't bad, but I believe you can improve. No, he he doesn't want to hear that. All right. That's fine. Sonora, he's still a young player. He's still trying to find his way in the rotation. You know, Kiri Shelton is still lurking over his shoulder. He can come in at any time and take his job. So he's going to lose a little bit of confidence there. Almost got the steal at midfield. There's Ola Kamara going forward. Nice pass to Aguita. That's not what we needed at all. First kickoff highlight that I can recall this season. And it is that man, Aguita. Ring to Kamar, the guy we made fun of for being out of position. Makes actually a pretty good pass right there. And then just Stefan, again, can't dive for that ball. It's just a good shot. Okay, so it's a brand new game. 2-2. Here we go again. More late game hijinks, hopefully. Here we go, corner with DeVries, sends it in. Adi went and got that one, but he sent it wide. He's been way off with his headers this season again. I'm just not happy about Adi's heading ability. And 14 should be good enough. Maybe it's his composure that's letting him down. I don't know. But he's not happy. He's not scoring a ton of goals. He's... He still has some goals. He's still okay this season. He's not, not the dominant striker, the dominant offensive force that we need. And uh, Przbilko just got left off the Polish national team. He's not happy about that. I'm not happy about that either. So we're going to have to start playing him a little bit more as well. We'll see how we do this. Uh, he'll probably get some game time next game because we have another game in like two days. Because of this whole schedule change. There's a great tackle. DeVries again starting the offense. Aguita's getting too much space. But right now we're worried about the space DeVries has. Charging down the left-hand side. Sends one in. There's Adi with the header. Adi's going to get the rebound. He's going to win a corner out of that. Okay. So that was a great play by DeVries. See if he can make another great play. Here's our... Lovely corner play that doesn't work too much. Adi down the middle can't win it. Now here comes New York on the counterattack. Vieto has it. One on one gets past our fullback. He's going to get closed down on by three different guys. There's a great tackle. Nuhu, even with a yellow card there, he makes a great tackle. Acosta's got a 6 0 rating. What's happening? Uh, we don't really have anybody to bring in for him, necessarily. So we're going to move a catchy up there and bring in, I suppose, Lashy. And we're not going to let him be the roaming playmaker because that's not really his deal. We'll let him be center mid. Anybody else we need to take out? Ugh, Aguirre's got a 6.3 rating, but uh, we don't have our right 
fullback currently in the game or in the depth chart. So we can't really make a move there. So, yeah, here we go. Tinner home for New York. 79 minutes. They're trying to get the go-ahead goal here. Here's Kamara wide open. Let's, let's cover him, fellas. Oh, my God. What was that? What on earth was that? He just sort of, you know, lazily tapped it towards the goal. And I guess that's like aiming your shots or whatever. But it seemed like we had plenty of time to stop this. Look at that. Just another poor dive by Stefan. Needs to learn the kick save. You know, the hockey style kick save. I don't know. 85 minutes. This is sort of a reverse of that Orlando game where they we managed to pull one out with a late goal. Still giving up a lot of goals all of a sudden. I don't know what it is. Every so often, every few games, we just give up way too many goals. Here's the end. Oh, here we go. Catchy, can he get the equalizer? No, he can't. That would have been great. That would have been an amazing last second free kick goal. That would have made me very happy. But now they don't want me to be happy. They want me to be sad. Villafania heads it out. And there is the final highlight. 22 shots. 15 on target. And we lose 3-2. It's very upsetting. Very upsetting. I gotta ponder these goals. I gotta think about these goals. How were these goals let in? Were they problems with the goalkeeper? Were they problems with our central defense? Been messing around with our central defense a little bit. I hadn't planned on doing that, but all the central defenders want to play. So you were not good enough. We should have won that. Who's stressed? I mean, yeah, I can understand DeVries. He got the player of the match. Uh, I'm happy with his performance, but... Everybody else, not so happy. we got to think about our defense again this season. Uh, it's not as bad as last year, obviously, because we're not playing such a high line. But we still got issues. DeVries shines. Yeah, sure, we'll praise his performance. Superb with the number of chances. He's excellent. Okay. Um, speaking of that, dynamics are pretty good. Average, good, good leadership support. Get the hierarchy here. We finally have a team leader now. Fernando Adi is our team leader, so that's good. It'd be better if he was playing better. Tilt still opposes us, even though I'm giving him playing time. So we'll see if he comes around after this uh, promissory period is done. But we do have more players supporting us now. Eight players support. 23 players, no real opinion. One player opposes you, just tilt. Um, but everybody else is good, especially the leadership. Wilson is now an influential player. Uh, he's another guy we're trying to get more playing time, but he's currently injured. So, anyway, we'll come back for our next game real quick. It is Montreal, uh, home game. And then after that, next episode will be U.S. Cup. So we're going to pause it here. Okay, we are back for the double header here with Montreal. We are evens. Last two games we've played against Montreal, we've won both times. We both have a few injuries and whatnot. Uh, we are playing at home at Nippert Stadium. Only 14,000 tickets sold. So uh, it appears Montreal isn't a very big, uh, very big draw for us. What, uh, what day of the week is this? Schedule. Does it say it's Wednesday? No, it's not Wednesday. It's a Saturday. Come on, people. It's a Saturday. What are you doing? Um, see, it's a Saturday in May. So there shouldn't be any college football going on. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Chris, yeah, we, yeah, we're lacking some match sharpness. What else you got to do in Cincinnati in May? Are the Reds in the playoffs or something? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, we got a little bit of a different lineup today. Stefan in goal. We still have Nuhu and Tilt. 
Richards is now in defense. Clute on the right wing. Akugo, Akechi, DeVries, Acosta, Shelton at the right wing, and Prisbilko up top. We're resting some people from last game, also trying to get some people ready for the U.S. Cup and making sure we're playing all of our international players in this game so that we don't play any of them, or we don't play many of them anyway, in the U.S. Cup game, which is like in three days. So, a lot of different variables going on here, but I still expect nothing but a win from this match. Let's go. So the, we know the fans come out for important games, but I guess less important games in the rain they're not so happy about. We'll see. Mid-season doldrums here in MLS, unfortunately. Petrasso's injured and on the bench for Im the impact. We didn't even look at their lineup, honestly. Uh, Etinella in goal, 31-year-old American. He looks sort of average, sort of your typical MLS-type goalkeeper. Watts, Marquez, <laughs> Jaguer, and Silva on defense. Oh, and Philippe. They're running a 3-5-3. Three, three. All right. What am I talking about? I'm running, running a 3-5-2 with wingbacks, whatever you call that, 5-3-2. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't like it. It's the happy face formation. That's what I call it. Here we go. Here's Klute to Shelton. They're very defensive. Look at how packed they are. Back line to DeVries. He heads it back to nobody, though. And here comes Montreal looking to start the attack. Watts has it. Putting a lot of pressure on this formation, and they turn it over immediately. Kugo looking to make a play. Tilt. Down to DeVries. The offense seems to be running a lot through DeVries these last two games. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's giving him at least some opportunities. Let's switch the field. There we go. Kugo out wide to Kiri Shelton. Can he get around his man? He centers it to no avail. But there's a Kugo. Akechi forward to Acosta. He's looking for some space. Drops it back for Nuhu. Nuhu back to Acosta. He's on the right foot. Can he shoot it? He does. Just wide. Just wide. He got on that right foot, though. Just a little more accuracy would have been nice. So Kugo's a little tired in this match. So is Akechi. They'll probably have to be subbed out at some point. One, if not both. Uh, Crispum is back on the bench, though he's suggested to be limited to 45 minutes. As you can see, he's still coming, still recovering from that nagging injury. It's like a thigh injury or something. It just won't go away. We'll see what happens. Might have to play him in the U.S. Cup. I don't know. Acosta's been playing every game, and he's a little worn out. Getting shots on goal, but they're coming from far out. Yeah, that's to be expected. Shelton, maybe not that. Fade away from 30 yards. Maybe isn't the shot we're looking for. Here we go. Throw in. New who to a catchy. A simple pass, simple play. See if we can start something. Here's a Kogu. He's going to shoot it, and he does, and it's over, unfortunately. What's his shooting ability? It's not great. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We got another corner, this time a catchy from the far side. Sends one in tilt. Oh, can't get over top of the goalkeeper. So we're getting a lot of highlights here. Sort of pinning Montreal down to their end with the exception of whatever's happening at this highlight. But for the most part, we've got all the highlights. Let's see, and this one is continuing, so it's a long one. New who down the field, can't get it to Prisbilko, but Akugo has it. He shifts it out wide to Kiri Shelton. See if he can send one in. No, he doesn't send it in. Now he shoots it. All right, team instructions, hit early crosses. Let's try to hit the big man. That would have been a perfect early cross potential from Shelton to get it in to Prisbilko. Prisbilko was making the run, and Shelton didn't see him, didn't go for it. Not happy about it. All right. So it was an okay first half. We dominated, but we didn't score. They got two players booked. Go to the dressing room. Let's be passionate. Um, 
No, let's not. Let's be assertive. Uh, where's the, like, we've been the better team? We're the favorites, so give the fans something to cheer for, I guess? No, I don't know. I don't know. Nobody liked that talk. It would be awesome if at halftime coaches just had, like, five cards, five little index cards to choose from of things they could say. There's the early cross. That's what we want more of right there. Send it in to the big fella and see if he can do some damage. I mean, that one obviously wasn't on target, but I liked the idea. Knew who Akechi wins it at midfield. He's he's a better defensive player than I thought. Like, I, you know, we brought him in mainly for his playmaking ability, but he gets a lot of steals at midfield just because he's, he's pretty good. That was a terrible pass. It was a pass to it as if we had two strikers, but we didn't actually have two strikers. It's like they were passing it to the, the place where the second striker should be. There's Prisbilko. He can't win the header, but Akugo heads it back to Akechi Acosta. Out wide, DeVries. Make a play, buddy. Make a play. Why do you keep diving inside and shooting the ball? What is that? Like, that's not in his, his repertoire, is it? That's not what he does. He dwells on the ball, apparently. Maybe we should start training him to, like, stay out wide. Because finishing and first touch and all that stuff's not really his forte. I don't know. I'd rather have him stay out wide and send in crosses. Not seem to be happening. 60 minutes down. Here's Silva with a free kick for Montreal. Sends it in. Tilt heads it. Okay, lots of people were deciding whether they wanted to go for that or not, but only Akugo chose to go for it. Let's get reorganized here, buddies. We got Clute going forward. Let's get back in position, fellas. That was a terrible pass. Because Bilko has to chase it down. Kiri Shelton is just, I don't know, there's something about him. He's not on in tune with the rest of the team. Because Bilko, likewise, is... Doing whatever it is he's doing here. Good steal by Tilt. He sends it forward. Can Prisbilko get under it? He cannot. Marquez karate kicks it downfield, but Clute is there. Another long highlight. Catchy. Costa triple teamed. He fires one long off the crossbar. Again, keeper nonchalantly just calculates that that's going to hit the crossbar. All right, all right, all right. What are we going to do for subs here? Um, bring Philippe on for a Kugo. He's tired and he's got a yellow card. And then what? After that, I got no idea. I don't really want to bring Adi in. I want to give Prisbilko a, a chance. Don't really want to bring... Crisp them in unless absolutely have to. We change out both of our midfielders, but Akechi's got a 7.0 rating, so we'll just let them. We'll just let them. I don't know. Let them play. Are we going to get a nil-nil draw versus Montreal? I don't know. Is that the worst thing in the world? No, but this is a home game, so you'd like to win one. They are playing defensive. They're playing very defensive back there. Here we go. Let's start the attack. Kiri Shelton. Back to Clute. Catchy to Clute. Not sure what he's doing, but he's doing something. Come on, boys. Let's get organized here. There we go. Philippe. Catchy. Out wide. There we go. Nuhu on the overlap. He again takes it inside to DeVries, who's already inside. There's Bill Go. Who launches it into the eighth row? Why is everybody diving inside? Why aren't people staying out wide? There's something, some setting that I need to make. I don't know. New who wins the header. Tavriz. See what he can do with it. 73 minutes, so there's still plenty of time left in the game. Um, New York seems, or Montreal, I mean, seems to have spread their defense out a little bit. Here's Kiri Shelton. 
Out wide to Klute. Can Klute send it in? He does. There's Przbilko over two men. There it is. Finally. Finally, somebody follows the game plan. Cincinnati moves up to third position. Shelton again dives in, but leaves space for the fullback, I suppose. Klute does his thing, and so does Pizbilko. Scores. Outstanding. All right. 1-0. How are we looking? Look at Klute with a 7.7 .7 rating off the bench. Good man. I mean... Not off the bench in this game, but off the bench typically. Uh, the, the whole defense is playing pretty well. All right, Akechi is finally exhausted, so we'll take him out of there. Bring in uh, Alashi. Move him down to midfielder, and there we go. So that is Akechi's one sort of drawback is his fitness. He gets tired more than anybody else. I mean, we do run a very um, demanding style. And maybe that's why Crispum seems to play a little better because he's got that 13 fitness. He seems to run all over the field, no problems. Whereas Akechi, what's he got? He's only got nine fitness, so he struggles a little bit. All right. There we go. Full time. 1 0. Exciting, exciting victory. Yay, team. Good for us. Klute gets the player of the match. 7.9 in the assist. Pizbilko with the goal. Wow, was that 35 shots on goal? Uh, I do believe that was 35 shots on goal. Where is it? Where is it? Stats? Match stats? Yeah, 35 shots to five. Why are there so many shots this year? I don't know. Maybe because we're not working it into the box. That just seems excessive. 10 on target, 16 off target. So that's like nine somewhere else, I suppose. Deflected maybe? I don't know. 64% possession. Montreal just sat back and tried to get... The scoreless draw away, but we're unable to hold on. So there we go. Vintage display from Cincinnati. Uh, so we ended up loss, an exciting loss and a boring win. I guess, you know. Uh, I guess that's going to be our fate this year. If we try to play like last year, we're going to lose. So we're going to have to sit back and just sort of be calm about it, play defensive. Anyway, North Carolina up next in the U.S. Cup. And we'll try to look for another cup run and qualify for the Champions League again. Maybe qualify legally for the Champions League next year. We'll see. But uh, that's going to be it. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>